So I want to talk about compressors and for more specifically how to choose the right compressor and what the flow rate and the pressure of the setting of the compressor means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to purchase a compressor. This is a pretty simple <laughs> dumbed down compressor. So we have my compressor head up here and I've got my air breather coming in. I've got my pressure regulator here and I've got air coming out. So the air is flowing this way. We'll talk about flow rate and pressure in a second on how this goes, but let's just say when I bought this or when I'm looking it up on some kind of sheet, I'm looking at a whole bunch of different compressors and I want to find one that fits my jaw. And I look at this and I say, oh, this one, if I set this to 80 PSI, it'll give me five cubic feet per minute. So it's going to be rated somewhere and often compressors will have two different ratings. Okay, so I'm just going to work with one of them. So the, on the compressor somewhere, it says if this thing is set to 80 PSI, which is gauge pressure, it will give me 5 cubic feet per minute, whoa, 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 which is pressurized air. Okay, good. So that's what's going to happen is if I set this thing, this pressure regulator, to 80 PSI, the flow rate coming out of here is going to be 5 cubic feet per minute. So what does that mean the air is coming in here? Well, the air that's coming in here is standard cubic feet per minute. So I'm going to call that standard cubic feet per minute. Now we don't know what that value is, but it's okay, I'm not after that. I just want to unpack kind of what's going on. Now, we know the pressure here, because we're dealing with PSI, it's actually zero. So the pressure equals zero PSI. We can also say that the pressure in this case is, um, is equal to 14.7 PSIA. So as far as the atmospheric pressure goes at 14 PSI. So two different math, two different pressures. And we know that whenever we do any formulations, we have to always convert it to PSI A. Okay, that's because of the gas laws. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go back and say, well, I need, my compressor is rated at 84.5. Well, you know what? I actually need, my system needs to run on 100 PSI. And I don't need five, I only need four. So I want to see if this fits. So what's going on is that I can look at this I can call this my Q1, and I can call this my P1. So in this case, it's kind of the before pressure and the before flow. So if I were to set my compressor to, to 80 PSI, it would have a flow rate of this. Now, I need, so my Q2 is going to be 4 cubic feet per minute. Well, that's not a very good minute. Okay, and my pressure, which is my gauge pressure, I need to be at 100 PSI. So my question is, will this give me four, PF, four cubic feet per minute if I were to turn this regulator up to 100 PSI? So that's what we're gonna be after. So what I wanna do is I wanna unpack a little bit of the theory of the math just so you may, be, you may be interested in knowing where the formulation comes from and why. And it actually has to do with power, no matter how you look at it. The power in is going to equal to the power out, as we know, right? Well, there's a little bit of a loss, but as far as formulating formulas, we forget loss for now. So what I'm going to say here is that you may not know this, but let's just say P1 power. I'm going to say, I don't know, PW just for power because pressure and power also are a capital P. So PW1, so the power in is going to, the power in, that is actually going to be the same as PW2, the power out. So the power in is the power out. But does air have power? Well, actually it does. It's pretty cool, watch this. Um, if, I, if I know that power actually, power is actually Q, now I'm going to write a W there, it's flow rate times pressure. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, you can go and unpack that and, and you know, figure out why that's true, but it actually boils down to this. We know that power equals current times voltage in electricity. Well, what's going on here is it's really synonymous. The flow rate 
is very much like this. That's a flow rate, it's current. And this pressure is very much like voltage. So we know that's true. Well, with the same convention, you can actually say this. So, if the power on this side is equal to the power on this side, that means that I can also say, I can say Q1 times P1 equals Q2 times P2. Okay, so the, the power on this side is the same as the power on that side. I can take that concept and I can broaden it. So I think we're good with that concept. Let's get rid of this. And let's talk about that a little bit differently. I'm going to talk about it in two different ways. One is I'm going to talk about the power in, in, per, in perspective of the actual power coming out of here and the power coming out of here. Now we know that power is flow rate times pressure. We know that the flow rate over here is in standard cubic feet per minute. It's just atmospheric air. By the way, the flow rate into the breather is really high. It'll be at 25, 30. So if this thing is set to 50 C, uh, CFM at 80 PSI, my flow rate in here is going to be like 30 standard cubic feet per minute because the pressure is a lot lower than 80 PSI. It's actually zero. Okay, so the other concept is this. I can say that this is Q1 and that's P1 and then the, the air coming out of here is Q2 and P2. So if I were to study this air, the pressure that this thing is making is going to be uh, a different pressure than what I set my regulator to. And the flow rate through this hose right here, or tube or whichever the connection is, is going to be different than the flow rate coming out of here. So the power here is equal, the power on this side is equal to power on that side. Now, I said I was going to take this to another step about, it's actually about before and after, about the, the pressure setting before and after. It's also equivalent to the power, because however you look at it, the power that this thing is generating is always going to be the same. And what I'm saying here is that if I were to, like, it's kind of a, a timeline. If the before and after, so I'm going to use different labeling here. It's not actually correct, but I think it'll help you get a concept here. So if I'm going to say the pressure, I'm starting with flow rate, so I'm going to be consistent. The flow rate before and the pressure before is equal to the flow rate after and the pressure after. The before and after part is, if I were to set this to 80 PSI and have it a flow rate of 5 cu uh, cubic feet per minute, We'll consider this the Q before and the P before. Now, I mean, we don't actually have to set it to that and measure it. The manufacturer has done that for us, and we know that that's what it is. Okay. The after is what I set it to. In that case, I'm going to set it to um, 100 PSI, and my flow rate hopefully is going to be more than 4. So really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to what I should actually call it. That's one, that's one, and this is two, and that's two. Just to unpack this concept a little bit more, what I can say, actually, is no matter what, the power of the motor, of this motor, of this prime mover, this device, whether it's a diesel engine or whether it's a... Uh, three-phase electric motor or a little DC motor or whatever it is, the power of this is going to be seen in this. Of course, less the efficiencies. But again, I'm just saying, hey, you know, when we're developing formulas, we forget about the efficiencies. So, what I'm saying is here, the power of this motor is going to be here. Now, if we can study that, the air coming in and the pressure here, so the power of this is going to be represented in the air coming in, the flow rate of the air coming in, or it's going to be represented here, or it's going to be represented here. So I just unpack the formula and why that formula exists. So as far as actually using the formula, let's get rid of this. And I know that my P1, which is what the, what the, the compressor is rated to, is going to be equal to 80 PSI, my, and I'm going to write my Q here, my Q1 is going to be 5 Q2 
cubic feet per minute. So those are my kind of before and after. I know that I want to run my system at 100 PSI. So again, just to stop, what are we doing? I'm trying to select a compressor. So I've looked at this on a, a, data, on a data sheet or on a magazine, or I mean on some kind of a list of compressors I'm looking at. And I'm like, I think that works for me, but I don't know if it's going to work for my process. So I have this information, but I need to run it at 100. So what I need to do is I know that my P2 is going to equal 100 PSI. I want my Q2 to be 4 cubic feet per minute. But I don't know if, if I turn this thing to 100, will that go below 4 or will it handle it? So I'm going to write the formula like this. I know that my Q1 times my P1 equals my Q2 times my P2. It's because the power in equals the power out. Now I'm going to solve it for here. So I'm going to say my Q2 is going to equal Q1 P1 divided by P2. So if I put these values in, I have to be careful because I know that essentially this actually comes from the gas law. So I have to use absolute pressure. So in this case, I'm going to write this. My Q1 is going to be 5 cubic feet per minute. My P1, which is 80, it's going to be 80 plus 14.7. And that's pounds per inch squared. And that's going to be divided by this pressure, which is 100 plus 14.7 pounds per inch squared. And then that equals 5 bracket 80 plus 14.7 bracket divided by bracket 100 plus 14.7 bracket equals 4.12. Excellent. Four, well, that's not a four. 4.13 cubic feet per minute. So, if I take this compressor and I turn it up to 100, the flow rate will go down to, it's not a four, but it'll go down to 4.13 cubic feet per minute. Okay, so I can use this compressor. I might want to overpower it a little bit. I might want to say, well, that's kind of pushing it. I might want to get one that has a little bit of a higher flow rate when I turn it into 100 PSI. So what I want to do now is I just want to demonstrate kind of the physics of what's going on here. So what we've learned here is that you've learned that we understand a compressor is, is rated in some pressure. So if you set it to this pressure, it will give you this flow rate. Your system may use a lower pressure or a higher pressure. You have to calculate it. You use that formula. It's pretty straightforward. Make sure that the flow rate is, is if you calculate it and the flow rate that the compressor will do is below what you need, then you're okay. But you may want to go above that by 25% at least. It's stressing your co compressor a little bit less. You want your compressor running all the time. So. The other thing is that I want to show the physics of this. Now remember, at a low pressure, the flow rate is going to be the same. Because if I have some compressor that has, that it's a 100 watt compressor, whatever it is, that motor is putting out 100 watts, I can see that in the flow rate and the pressure. So however you look at it, if I calculate, the, if I multiply the flow rate times the pressure, it's going to equal the power. Okay, so that means that if the pressure goes down, the flow rate has to go up. If the pressure goes up, the flow rate has to go down. Let me demonstrate that here with a piece of uh, blue foam and uh, my compressor. So if you look here, I've got my compressor and it's set to a very low pressure. And then what I have here actually is have some baby powder that's in a bottle. And I'm going to turn this on. I'm just going to shake it a bit. And we're going to see some, some air, air come out of here. Okay, good. So. What I'm going to do is study the flow rate, and then I'm going to turn this to a higher pressure, and I'm going to do the same thing, and we'll see if kind of a thinner burst of air comes out. Because essentially, if I set that to a high pressure, the flow rate is going to be much lower. Okay, let's go over to the board. So I've got my baby powder. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shake. So, and this hose come in, comes in here, and I just have a hole here. So the Venturi effect is happening here, and you'll study that in vacuum. Actually, I think you've already done that. Let me give it another shake. So let's see. This is really low pressure. Let's see what kind of what kind of flow rate we get. I'm going to run this for the same amount of time. Okay, 
So I'm going to do that again, and maybe we'll just So that's the amount of air, that's the amount of stuff that's here. So I think that's pretty thick. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the pressure up quite a bit. Now I've got my pressure at 100 PSI, and we'll see if it's kind of a little bit thinner. It's going out a lot faster. But as you can see, the, the actual mist that's there, it's less dense, it's less thick. Let me give it a real good shake because that seems to do it. So it, you can see it's thinner. So the flow rate is not as high when the pressure's higher. So you've seen that in, in actual real practicality. And we understand the math. It all boils down to power. So as far as selecting a compressor goes, just figure out the math and just do the actual calculation and just make sure that whatever you calculate, the, the flow rate that that compressor will give you is about 25% less than you actually need. Then you'll be good.